on fire. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your presence. We ask that as we open your word, that you open our mind. We ask that somehow and some way you help us to give you our undivided attention wherever we are at home, in our rooms, in our cars, wherever we are, we pray that your spirit will just just visit us right now. And at the end of the day, we will be careful to give you the honor and the glory. We ask this in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. What are you going to do when the world's when the world is on fire? I don't know about you, but 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 you the question that each of us should ask ourselves on today, on this Sabbath uh, morning, if the Lord came today, hear me, if the Lord came today, would you be ready? That's the question. If the Lord came today, would you be ready? Now, publicly, uh, we might say yes, but, but privately, if we're honest with ourselves, there would be some questions. There would be some questions, um, uh, you know, with this, if we're honest. Now, 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 now some of us, uh, we think we all that. Some of us, we think we righteous, we think we all that, and we don't have a, you know, we don't have anything else to do. Uh, we, you know, we, we do this, we, you know, we, we think we got it all together. But if we're honest, if we're honest, we all must confess that, that, that there is some work to do. There's some work to do. And if we're not careful, if you're one of those persons that just know, well, well, if he came in two minutes, I'll be ready. But, 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 but if you're not careful, you're going to be like what happened, what we preached about last week in Revelation 3, where Jesus will walk out on you and not even say goodbye. He will be outside knocking on the door not realizing when you look at why Jesus was outside, if you look at the condition and, and what was uh, described with the seven churches, uh, the, the uh, Laodicean with lukewarmness and complacency and, and self-righteousness, all of that ran Jesus out the church. And therefore, he's on the outside and knocking. And I'm simply saying you better be careful. You better be careful if you think you got it all together and you don't have any more growing to do. Uh, but the question is, what are we going to do when the world's on fire? Let's go to the Word of God. Let's go to the Word of God, and let's turn to the book of, 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 of Romans. Romans, no, uh, excuse me, Matthew, 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 Matthew. I wrote the verses down, and I didn't write the chapter. What was the chapter? Uh, Brian, help me out. Help me out. 24. I thought that's what it was. Okay, I wasn't sure. I wrote all the verses down. Uh, we, have, we, we, we have Matthew 24, and we want to look at verse uh, 36. Oh, yeah, my book is open right to it. Wow, right there, right there. Okay, the Bible says, and, and beginning with verse 36, that's Matthew chapter 24, and beginning with verse 36, the Bible says, But of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Skip down to verse 44. The Bible says, therefore be you, therefore be you also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man come. Now, now, the thing is, let me just set this up by taking you back over your life. I believe all of us can relate 
to what we've been through and how we have faced other challenges. And the thing is, we need to ask ourselves as we look at this message, how have we handled other crises in our lives? How have we responded? How have we bounced back? How, has we, how have we been able to go on in the midst of all these crises that we go through? You got to go back to when you was a teenager. Some of us, there was, it was rough. Some of us dealing with life partners. Some of us, our career. Some of us, our finances. There were storms in our lives. Some of us have faced sickness. Some of us have, have lost, uh, lost loved ones to death. Some of us have lost jobs. Some of us have, have, have been evicted. Uh, these are indicators. Some of us have struggled with a host of things, addiction, uh, divorce, all of those things. And we have to ask ourselves, how have we measured up when we have gone through crisis? Hopefully, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Hopefully, hopefully, you see the beauty about the beauty about trials and temptations and, and, and problems is they never all come at the same time. I am so glad that God allows them to be spread out over my entire life. Imagine if God gave you all of your stuff in one day. I think we would just fall out. So I'm glad God spreads it all over my life, and he gives me strength to make it. But, 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 but this is the point. Hear me. Hopefully, 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 as we get older, you see, age, age, age will, will teach you some things that, that, that life will not teach you. It says we have, you know, ho hopefully, hopefully, hopefully as we have gotten older, we have learned somehow to look to the Almighty for guidance through the storms of life. Let me say that again. Hopefully as we have gotten older, we have learned how to look to the Almighty to help us through storms. Okay, okay, let me go a little bit further. You know, I, I, let me go, let me be personal. Let me be personal. I remember, I remember going through a very, very challenging time in my life, and I didn't know if I would make it. I didn't know how things were going to turn out. I didn't know. Even, you know, sometimes we think preachers are immune from drama. You'd be surprised the drama that comes into a preacher's life. But this particular time, I mean, I did not know how it was going to turn out. And I remember, now hear me, somebody going to learn something. I remember one of my mentors, always have mentors in your life that can step into your life and give you guidance. Now, this particular mentor was much older than I was, and he called me. I remember I, as though it was yesterday. He called me in the midst of this storm. The winds were blowing. The lightning was flashing. Uh, they were about to count me out and this, that, and the other. And he called me. Hear me. Hear me because I'm about to teach somebody something. He called me and he dropped some wisdom on me that, that I believe saved me and it saved my ministry. Well, well, well Pastor, what, what was that wisdom? Because I, I, I need to know. This is what he told me. He said, Doc... He said, hear me now. He said, I know you hurt him, and I know the winds are flying here and there. He says, but this is what you need to do. Now, now you, you got to get this. He told me, he told me, this is what he said. I still remember that. I talked to him a few weeks ago. I check on him and, and what have you. But he told me, he told me something that saved my life. And my, he, he, this is what he told me. Now, you may want to write this down. He told me to shut down the lines of communication going out. He said, he, he said, right now the storms are flying and, and stuff is just going everywhere. He says, shut down all of the lines of communications, uh, you know, looking for empathy and, and sympathy and, and the folks that you think are on your side are not on your side. They are taking what you're saying and they're changing it here and there. He said, shut it down. 
And he says, what you need to do is instead of, and, and, and instead of looking for sympathy and empathy, he says, what you need to do is when you feel that you need to talk to someone, you need to go to the prayer closet. He said, go to the prayer closet. Go to the prayer closet. You need to shut down your circle of information going out and take it to the prayer closet because there's some folks that you think are on your side and, and you think they're giving you counsel. They are taking it and they're spinning it and what have you. So I said, he, he, he said, I know you, I know you heard him. And he said, just go to your prayer closet. I took his advice. I stopped talking. I shut it down that day. I shut it completely down. I didn't talk. People would call. I wouldn't answer them. And this, that, and the other. And, and I took it to the prayer closet. And guess what? With, as, soon as, I do, as soon as I did that, things begin to change. Things begin to change. Now, now everybody listening to me right now, hear me, has had experience and hardship of some kind. And if you haven't, all you got to do is keep living. Keep living. Let me, let me just drop this on you, and then I'll move on. Let me say this so you can understand it clearly. You see, we, we, the, 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 the thing is about, about gossip and what have you, gossip is only as good as the next piece of gossip. Okay, you, you don't believe me. You, uh, for the last couple of months, they've been talking about COVID-19. And that was the, every day, every, every day, that's all you heard was, was COVID-19 and, and sanitizer and, and get you some bleach and drink it and, and all, all, get you some bleach and drink it and you might get healed or what have you. But then all of a sudden, you have this other scenario pull up where someone that could not breathe, all of a sudden it just happened that someone had their devices and they taped it. Now, now understand, church, hear me, hear me clearly, hear me clearly. I usually don't, don't weigh in on these things, but, but this stuff has been happening for years. It's been happening for years. The only difference, the only difference is we have these devices and, and people do not leave home without them. They do not leave home without them. They do not leave home without them. And, and, and we've gotten used to, to, to you, know, we, we, you know, we've gotten so used to taking selfies. And, and so we always have our phone ready for safe, safe, uh, uh, selfies. I was watching this one sister. She was taking a selfie, not realizing that there was a, a, a pothole in front of her, a drop hole with a, the top hat. And she's walking, and all of a sudden, she disappeared. She disappeared. She was gone. But all I'm saying, this stuff has been happening. It's not new. And, and, and the thing is, the thing is, the thing is about your stuff, your stuff is only as fresh till the next fresh stuff. Now, on the streets, they'll say it another way, but, but anyway, we're we, we going to keep it, we're going to keep it moving. But the thing is, the thing is, let, let, let me, let me just, let me just help you. Let me just help you. You see, when you, hear me, hear me, hear me, when you go through hell, and you will. Keep living. When you go through hell and high waters, uh, the advice that I'm going to give you is don't stop and take pictures. Oh, no, you missed that. If you are going through hell or high waters, no matter what you go through, don't stop and take pictures. Get through it as quick as possible because if you don't, people will define you by that situation. And something that was only supposed to be a comma now becomes a paragraph. Not only does it become a paragraph, it becomes an essay. No, not just an essay. It becomes a dissertation. And, and something that was only supposed to last for a week or a month has stretched on for 20, 30, 40 years. And I'm simply saying, I'm simply saying is you have to learn how to move on. Something, you know, something that, that, that happened in the past, do not allow people to define you by something that happened in the past. That's why they call it the past, which means it's history. 
It's history. And in other words, we need to let it die, but we keep breathing life into it and, and that old stuff and, we, and, and, and stuff we can't fix, stuff we can't change. We got to realize the horse is dead. The horse is dead. It's time to unmount. That horse is not going to get up. But let me just move on quickly. I just wanted to drop that on you uh, as we set this up. But let me give you some homework because I'm not going to finish. So I'm going to give you some homework. Write this passage down. You don't have it. I'm going to give it to you. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 through 40. That's your homework. That's your homework. Okay, 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 Matthew 21, verses 33 through 40. Uh, that's the story of the king leaving his son in charge and, and being disrespected and killed. Okay, 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 but, but that's your homework. It'll give you another insight on what is happening from God's standpoint. Okay, okay, but let's go to the passage, Matthew 24. Matthew 24 and verse 36, the Bible says, but of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, follow me, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In other words, as we look at this topic, what are you going to do when the world's on fire? The Bible is giving us insight. The same thing that happened in Noah's time will happen in our time. It says, but as in the days of Noah, verse 37, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. In other words, the Bible says everything that we're doing now will be happening when Jesus comes. And they knew not until the flood came and took them away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, you have to understand, <laughs> hear me. Now, now, some folks use that passage because if you keep reading, it says one was taken and one was left. You know, they, they, individuals use this for the secret rapture. Use it for the secret rapture. But, 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 but you have to let the Bible speak for itself. The Bible is not talking about destination. It's talking about preparation. Oh, no, you missed that. You missed that. If you look at the context, the Bible says in verse 44, Therefore, be ye also ready. It's talking about preparation for your destination. But people take it out of context, and that's their business, this, that, and the other. But I just wanted to point that out. But let's go to the first point quickly. The first point is this. You have to be mindful of the times you live in. Okay? As it relates to what are you going to do, when the world's on fire, the first point is you have to be mindful of the times you live in. You got to be mindful of what's happening in your world locally. You have to know what's happening in your neighborhood. You have to know what's happening on, in the nation. You have to know what's happening in the world. Because why? Things are changing every day. Every day, things are changing. This is not the same place our parents grew up in. And you better recognize that, 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 that reality. This is not the same place. I was driving, check this out. I was driving, I was driving here to Bethany one day, and I saw a phone booth. I saw, I, 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 I saw a phone booth, church. So I decided that I was going to stop and make a call. So I pulled over in my vehicle, checked my surrounding, and I proceeded to the phone booth right there on, 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 on I won't tell you where it is, but anyway, I, I, I stopped, I picked up the phone, and there was nothing. And I said, okay, okay. Because I, need, I needed to know, I drove, I drive by it all, I see it, I said, I need to see if this phone works. Now, 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 those of you that have lived a while know it used to be a time when we didn't have our cell phones and you were out and you needed to make a phone call, you would go to a phone booth and then if there was somebody on there, you were hoping they would, they would get off. 
and they, and they would just be there, just, just chit-chatting, talking about nothing. But, but anyway, I, I took it a step further. I took it a step further. The phone booth didn't work, so I went into the store. It's in front of their store. They should know, you know, why this phone booth is not working. So I go into the store, and I ask, you know, I, I said, I, I just got a question. And they said, I, I said, I, I wanted to make a call. I wanted to make a call, so I, I, I picked up the phone, and, and the gentleman looked at me. He looked at me, and I said, I wanted to make a call. Is there a problem? The phone is not working. He said, where you been? I said, I, I said what you mean where I, where, what you mean, you know, what, 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 you know, what do you mean where I've been? I, I, I just want to use the phone. He said, that phone hasn't worked in years. So I just wanted to know where you've been. What planet are you from? And, and, and I'm simply saying, uh, you got to realize the reality, this world that we live in is changing. Uh, the, you, know, you know, the Bible says that knowledge has increased. Technology is good, but you have to be, be, be careful because, because you will forget things. You will forget things, you know, and I, I, I know I'm not alone, you know, you, you know, with all the education, all the education that I have, uh, you know, I, I, because of technology, very seldom do I, I pull out a pen or pencil and write. So, 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 so when I take out a check or whatever, I have to think about what I'm writing. I got to think about how to make a particular letter. And, and if, you, if you're honest, your, your handwriting is getting worse and worse and worse. And, and furthermore, uh, my, my son said, what is a check? Folks don't, a lot of folks don't use checks. You know, but, but the point of it is things are changing. Things are changing. Uh, the community and neighborhoods are not the same. You don't know in today's world, sometimes, who's living next door to you? You have no idea. You have no idea. This country we live in is not the same country our foreparents grew up in. The world is spiraling out of control. Nature, the environment, wildlife will remind us uh, that, 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 that this world is under siege. You and I have to be aware of the times that we live in, because if we're not, we will not be prepared when the Lord comes back. We will come up short. In other words, we have to open our eyes and see that time is winding up for this planet. It's winding up. If this pandemic has taught us something, it has taught us that no one here on this planet is in control. Matter of fact, let's just act like the world is, let's just, let's just act like 100,000 people didn't die and just go to the beach. Let's just act like, just let's act like nothing happened and, 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 and go get our hair done and get our nails done and, and, and just, just, let's just, let's just act so we can, so we can have our life back. You see, how insensitive, how insensitive can we be? To act like everything is okay when it's really not. You better hear me today. Don't, don't get fooled. Don't get duped. Don't let down your guard. You better know what time it is. You better know, you better know uh, the times that you live in because we are under siege. We are, we are under siege. Get all, you know, the, 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 um, the, the uh, philosophy of the world in this world is get all you can, can all you get, and sit on the can. I got mine, you get yours. And that's all that matters. And the thing is, you have to, as we, as we close out this point, knowing, knowing the times, you got, to, you got to ask yourself, are we really at the end of Earth's history. Are we really? Are we really? Are we really? You know, I don't know about you, but you just get a feeling that, that, that something is about to happen with all of this drama, with all of this uh, politics, with all of these nations rising against nations. Something is about to happen. 
So you have to know, you have to know, you have to know, you have to know the times that you live in. Do not, do not, do not get, do not get blindsided. That's the first point. Know, know what's going on around you. You have to know. But then the second thing, quickly, you have to know your mindset. <laughs> you got to know your mindset. It's one thing to know what's going on around you, but then it's another thing to know your mindset. When it comes to the end of the world, you have to ask yourself, is there an urgency in your life? Is there an urgency? What is your attitude to being ready when Jesus comes? Yes, yes, the folks, the church, the conference, but the real issue is what is your mindset? Is there an urgency to your life, to your life? Is there something in your life that reminds you that you need to, to, you, you, need to get, uh, you need to get it together? There's no urgency. There's a lack of of urgency. The attitude is whatever, whatever. But the Bible speaks about that. Romans, turn with me to Romans. Romans, quickly, quickly. Romans, Romans, Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. The Bible says in Romans chapter 13 and verse 11, and that knowing the times, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we, when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in riotousness, drunkenness, not in chambering, not in wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put on, put on, put on, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provisions for the flesh to fulfill the last, uh, to fulfill the lust thereof. You see, when you look at those passages, it talks about a mindset that you have to know the times, but also you have to know your mindset. If you are, if you are not ready, you will not get a second chance. There are some things in life you get a second chance. You can get fired from your job, laid off from your job, go find another job, Okay? To get fired, okay. So you got unemployment, so that holds you over, or what have you. You can you can rebound from that. You can marry the wrong person and get real ugly, this, that, and the other, ugly divorce. And at the end of the day, you can rebound from that. You can uh, buy a car, turns out to be a lemon, you can rebound from that. So a whole lot of things can uh, can go wrong in this world, but when it comes to your soul salvation, if you don't get it right, you don't get a second chance. And the Bible lets us know right there, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. And there's things in our life that we need to cast off. The Bible says we need to walk honestly as in the day, not in riotousness and drunkenness and so on. But then it says we got to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make provisions not for the flesh, uh, but to fulfill the lust thereof. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Your mindset is everything. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he or she. You see, if you can get your mindset to do something, you can get it done. It's just like during this pandemic. During this, during this pandemic, it has given, it has given those of us uh, that are married uh, time to do some chores around the house that would have never got done. And, 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 and those of us that are married and your wife is at home, she got this long list of stuff. And, and, and even as a preacher, Miss Mary had a long list. 
That, that, that list was, was so long, it was, it was more on that list than Donald Trump had votes. I mean, that list was long. That list was long. I start. I said, what do you do? What do you do? You can't complain. You just start. Get, get at it. Get at it and go down the list. You, t- you tick that off, tick that off, and you think you got to the end. You said, I can take a break. I can take a break. So we having a talk. We having a talk. We just sitting, talking, uh, just chilling, looking out at the water. And, you know, women, well, you know, I, I think this is just me. I may be wrong, but women are, women are the, uh, the greatest creation that God created. They are the smartest creation that God has created. Let me just tell you, women can get things done that nobody else can get done. Oh, no, I, maybe I'm just talking to myself. But anyway, anyway, Miss Mary and I talking, and, she, and I'm just reminding her of this list. I'm thinking she's going to pat me on the back. Oh, that was good. That was good. And she, and she threw me a curve. She threw me a curve. That's how smart she said. She said, you know what? Uh, uh, you know, the floor need to be mopped. You know, you know, you know, I'm just thinking about the floor. She, she, she's already thinking about something. But check this out. This is how she kept. She said, the floor need to be mopped. I said, okay, I'm going to take care of it tomorrow. Well, ain't that deep? It just, it just some, some water, so, you know, some water and some whatever, and, and you go to mopping and get it done. And then she said, she said, the problem is, the problem is, is you don't change the water. I said, okay. You use the same water for the whole floor. So at some point, you put in dirty water on the floor. Okay, I received that. I, I got education. I said, okay. I, I said, well, I'm going to just change the water. I said, I ain't got no problem with that. So I agreed to change the water so I'm not using dirty water. But then, you know, remember, women are always down the street. You just coming around the curve, just gets kept. She said, oh, yeah, by the way, because you've been using dirty water, the grout is dirty. The grout is dirty. I said, okay, well, I'm going to start using, I'm going to start using uh, clean water. She said, but that's not going to get the, the grout back dirty. See, I didn't know she had already in her mind concocted to have the grout clean. So I YouTube how to clean the grout. You know, you YouTube everything, and, you know, they gave you a couple of suggestions, and I kept on, and I found one that I thought would work. So I, I, I you know, so I did it. I did it. I said, well, well I'm going to start in the kitchen. I'm going to start in the kitchen. Just try it out. Just try it. Well, first I did it in, the, in the one, one place in the kitchen and one in the hallway. I just dropped a little bit. They said, leave it there for about 15 minutes and then scrub it and then wipe it up. And boy, it was, it was, it looked brand new. So I was just trying it, but Miss Mary came by. She said, she said, the whole house has to be done. I was just trying it out. I was just trying it out. So, so I said, okay, I said, that's, that's, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of scrubbing. Just, anyway, I got stuff to do. But anyway, anyway, I said, well, I'm going to start with the kitchen. So I did the kitchen, did the kitchen, and it looked good. It looked good. It looked good. It looked good. And she said, well, the rest of the house don't look good. So, 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 so the point of it is, what, what, what I'm trying to say is, is it wasn't until my mindset locked up with her mindset that it got done. And I'm simply saying that as it comes to your salvation, you got to have the right mindset. Your mindset is everything. The Bible says that the man thinketh in his heart, so is he. We live in a world of, of, of distractions, a life of busyness, running, r- running from here to there, running from this nothing to the next nothing. And, and, and as you get older, as you get older or, or, or on your deathbed, you begin to size up what's important. You begin to size up what's important real fast. And I'm simply saying as it relates to this subject, what are you going to do when the world's on fire? The point of it is you have to know your mindset towards the end time and if Jesus comes. Your mindset is everything. Your mindset, if you make up your mind, your body will follow. And then the third one quickly is you have to prepare yourself. Oh, yeah, you can have the mindset, but if you don't do anything about it, you just, you, uh, you, you just talking. You just a sounding brass and tingling cymbal. So the third point is, is that you have to prepare yourself. Everything, now check this out, and you got to get me, you know, don't, don't miss this. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. You got to prepare yourself, but, but get this first. Everything we needed to be saved. 
Everything we needed to be saved was done at the cross except one thing. Oh, no, you missed that. Everything we needed to be saved uh, was done at the cross except for one thing. What is it, preacher? What is it, pastor? Jesus needs our consent to come in. Oh, no, you missed that. Oh, yeah. He did everything we need to be saved at the cross. The only thing that, he, that, that, that we have to do is consent. All we have to do is say, I surrender. That's all we got to do is I surrender. But everything we needed to make it to heaven, everything we needed to, to be saved was done at the cross. The only thing that we need to do is say, yes, Lord, I surrender. And he will take it from there. The problem is... We let Jesus in one day and put him out the next day. Oh, you missed that. We, 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 we let Jesus in, and he comes in, and he's moving our furniture around and, and straightening up this, and, and we get tired, and we say he's cramping our styles, and we say, you got to get out of here. You got to leave from here. Whatever you will be doing when the world is fire, whatever you will be doing when the world is on fire need to be preceded by preparation right now. In other words, when you invite Jesus in, you cannot tell him how to arrange and redirect your life. And some of us, we accept him, we say, come in, and then he comes in, and he starts working on stuff that we're not ready to deal with and say, you got to get out of here, you got to go, and, and, we, and, and we evict him, and there we are in a big mess. But the point of it is, is that we have to prepare ourselves, invite him in, and he will lead and guide us. That's the, uh, that, that, that is about preparing yourself. But then quickly, you got to also, as it relates to prepare yourself, you got to do character building. You got to be doing some character building. You see, some of us are good at fixing up the outside. Oh, yeah, we can, we can get our hair done and, and get our nails done and, and get this done and get this suit and, 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 and look all this. But our characters are lacking. Let me just give you a passage. Let me give you a passage quickly as we hasten on. The next seven minutes, we'll land this plane. Psalms 51. Psalms 51. The Bible says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy mercies. Blot out my transgression. We're talking about character building, character building. Blot out my transgression. Then it says, wash me, wash me, wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and, and cleanse me from my sin. Then it says, for I acknowledge my transgressions. We're talking about character building. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity and so on and so forth. It's not easy, but it's necessary. It's not easy. But it's necessary. Care to build them. The Holy Spirit supervise and bring about the changes that are needed. Character, they said, is the only thing that's going to follow us when we leave up out of here. And I'm simply saying if the only thing that we're taking up out of here is our character, we got a whole lot of stuff that we got to leave behind. And then, and then the other point under that is not only care to build them, you have to also hear me, church. You got to look at your lifestyle. Your lifestyle. You see, your lifestyle is an indicator what road you on. Okay? Okay, stay with me. Your lifestyle. Your lifestyle needs to reflect Christ. No, 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 no. Please don't miss me. Don't, don't miss this. Somebody going to shout on this one. I'm not, we're not talking about behavior modification. You see, sometimes church folks just look at behavior modification. Behavior modification. You see, you see, you can become a part of church and just stop stuff just to be stopping because they said it. But you don't really mean it, okay? You know, so, so we're not talking about behavior modification where they told me this was wrong, so I stopped. Well, you stop. Well, 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 if you can do it all by yourself, what you need Jesus for? See, 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 our problem is we get caught up 
in behavior modification and, and, and with behavior. Now, oh, this is scary. I don't know if I should say I should say this the next week. But anyway, I'm going to tell you. You see, behavior modification, if you're not careful, is just acting. It's just acting. We, you know, we have a whole lot of Christians that are good at acting out. They just, you know, they, they, they know how to walk. They know how to speak. They know how to do the, thing at the right thing at the right thing. Uh, you know, I, I can be active, but it's not from your heart. See, some of us are, are great. Some of us are great. Some of us are, are great actors. We are great actors. And, and, and there's behavior modification, but not character development. There's a difference. You see, you, you, you see, there are some things, if someone tells me that it's wrong, I can just say, well, I, I'll just stop. Okay, let, let me help you. Let me help you. Let me, let me just use me. I remember, I remember, I remember, I remember I, I, I joined the church. I was 17 years old, 16, and, and I, I'm there in church, you know, stopped playing basketball on Friday night, just made a decision. It was difficult. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm getting older, I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do with my life. And, and all of a sudden, I realized that I wanted to be a vegetarian. Now, I wanted to be a vegetarian. I didn't ask the Lord. I didn't ask the Holy Spirit. I just made a, a, a decision in my mind at that age that I'm going to be a vegetarian. And I, that was it. That was it. That was it. That was it. I went back home. And, and, and my mom, my mom used to always give me money to go to Arby's. Arby's roast beef. It was, it, it, it was the bomb. Anyway, she gave me the money, and I said, well, mom, I'm, I'm a vegetarian. And she said, well, well she, 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 you know, she had a nickname. I won't tell you because I remember to be calling me by it, and I had to slap them and, and cut them and do whatever I got to do. But anyway, 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 I'm going to tell you my, my nickname. But anyway, 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 she was concerned because I've always been slim. She said she was worried about me losing weight. She said, well, she said, you, you, you know, you're going to lose weight. You got to put some pounds. You got to put some, 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 some. So anyway, anyway, but I made a decision at a young age to be a vegetarian. I didn't, the Lord didn't help me with that. All I'm saying is we can decide some behavior modifications. And over all these years, I've stuck to that. The Lord didn't help me with that. I didn't ask him to. I can handle that myself. So I'm saying in our life, there are things, there are things, there are things, there are things, there are things that we can do on our own. You've got to stop acting. There's something called justification. Let me just go quickly with this. Justification. Justification is come just as you are with all of your baggage, all of your drama, all of your attitude, and just come to the Lord. Lord, Lord accepts you just as you are, all jacked up. And you come into the church, and you look around, and folks looking holy, look like they never sinned. They looking at you crazy because you, you, you look like this, look like that. And, you know, but, but you got you, you to keep looking at Jesus. You, you see, church folks, church folks will mess you up. Oh, no, church, I've, been, I've, been, I've, been, I've been pastoring church folks for 35 years. And if you're not careful, church folks will, will dupe you. They, they, they will fool you. They will fool you and make you feel guilty and they're not doing anything to pay your bills, nothing to keep you propped up and this, that, and the other. But when you come to the Lord just as you are, the Lord accepts you. That's called justification, just as you are, with all of your hang-ups. And then he says, let me in, and I will come in. You let the Lord in, that's justification. He lets you, you let him into your house, into your life. He comes in. He takes a survey. And he goes to work. Then you move from justification to sanctification, which is the work of a lifetime. When you first come in, he has you working on this, and he gives you strength to overcome this and to deal with that because you can't do it yourself. The Spirit of God has to help you, and things are happening. You're making progress. That's called sanctification. Even after all these years of being in the church, I am still working on stuff. I am a recovering sinner. I want to declare today that Dr. Burden is a recovering sinner. 
I am victorious. It's just like someone that hasn't taken alcohol, and they are a recovering alcoholic. They've been, they've been clean. They've been clean for 30 years, but they still recovering because you can still give in. But sanctification, the Lord and the Spirit of God is working in your life to make sure that you stay clean and go to the next level and go to the next level until the final one comes, which is glorification. And other things, let me wind this down. We have to stop saying, I'm going to close with this and I'll finish, I'll finish next week. We got to stop saying that this just the way I am. I've been like this all my life, all my life. Instead of saying I've been this way all my life and just deal with it, we need to say I'm under construction. Say that with me. I'm under construction. And stay tuned. There's some more to come. But I do want you to know I, I'm never, ever going to give up. And the thing is, as we close, what does your relationship with God look like? Would it be enough if someone, if you walked up to a person right now, would it be enough to lead somebody to Christ? That's the question. And let me just drop this final point. There is a timetable. God has a timetable that only God knows. There's a cutoff date, and God is about to do something in this world. The Bible says, but of that day and hour knows no one, not even the angels, but God himself. But he says, therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think, not that the Son of Man come. God has a timetable for the execution of his will. The Bible says this world will wax worse and worse. More concerning is this. Hear me. More concerning is this. How many heartbeats do you have left? You see, some of us waiting for the Lord to come. We really need to be concerned. How many, how many heartbeats do I have left? Because the way things are going, you may not have much, much longer to live. So, so, so we're looking for signs and this to happen when in reality you need to see how many heartbeats you have left. And my appeal today is simple. Wherever you are, hear me, wherever you are in your walk with God, ask yourself, will it hold up when the world is on fire? If you're honest, you must confess it won't hold up. Therefore, there's some more work to do. There's some more praying to do. There's some more studying to do. There's some more surrendering to do. So right now, right now, as we prepare to close, you need to ask God to help you. Cry out, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Right, 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 right now, right this moment, wherever you are, talk to the master. Call on him. He will draw close to you. He loves you. He has an everlasting love for you. What you gonna do when the world's on fire? I challenge you. Call on God to help you to prepare. Call on God to, to do some care to build him. Invite Jesus into your life to rearrange your life. Don't worry about how far you drifted. God can handle that. Don't worry about what you've fallen into. He can handle that. What he can't handle is you not inviting him in. He can't handle that. He's not going to just kick down the dough. You have to invite him in. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we, we need some help. We need some help. What are we going to do when the world's on fire? 
Lord, help us to realize we got to prepare now before the storm hits. We got to do some character building. We got to invite you in to, to do what only you can do. So, Lord, right now, all those that are under the sound of my voice, we cry out. We cry out, it's me, it's me standing in the need of prayer. Yes, I, I've been in the church all my life. It's me, it's me standing in the need of prayer. Yeah, 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 I, I'm at Sabbath school and prayer, uh, it's me, it's me standing, in, I return my time, it's me, it's me standing in the need of prayer. Lord, I don't want to get caught with my work undone. I've been through too much down here to come up short. So, Lord, we ask right now that you be with us. But then, Lord, there's someone that's on the phone, somebody that's watching by Facebook Live, by YouTube, and you realize you need some help. You drifted. You drifted. You're not lost because you still know where to come back to. You know you got to come back to the cross. You, you know where the cross is. Even though you drifted, guess what? You never forget where the cross is. And there's deliverance there. So right now, even though you drifted, Fix your eyes on the cross and start walking, moving, moving towards him. So right now, right now, in the recesses of wherever you are, you want to get back to the cross. If that's you, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. God sees your hand. God, God, I can't see your hand, but God sees your hand. Raise your hand. Stretch it forward towards that device. God, help me. Draw close to me. Give me strength. Give me courage to press on up the King's Highway. Bless me. Continue to bless all of us. We ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Once again, as we close, we thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for choosing uh, Bethany. Uh, I was going to say bedside Bethany, but, but Bethany here at, uh, uh, here at Miami, Miami, Florida. We pray that you have enjoyed uh, the service. Our goal is to help you grow in your relationship with God. Uh, please feel free to watch the other uh, videos that we have there on YouTube. If you enjoyed it, put like, uh, subscribe, and, and share with someone. But again, until we meet next week, we ask that you be safe and know that God loves you, and He's going to bless you, and He's going to protect you. Take care, and as my mom used to say, if you can't be good, be careful. God bless you.